Hello, everybody. You are live with me um, this evening, and uh, I am taking inspiration tonight from the artist Paul Clay, uh, who um, I believe is a Swedish artist, and a lot of his work um, is... Uh, experimenting with shapes and negative space. Um, he's a really fun artist. Uh, and if you signed up with me this evening, uh, you will have gotten some samples um, that you can pull inspiration from, or you can just follow along with me. And uh, what I'm gonna do this evening is use acrylic paints. Uh, although when I do artist inspiration lessons, I really like to encourage everybody to um, use whatever you have on hand, use whatever feels comfortable and go from there. Uh, you definitely do not have to replicate what I do. Um, in fact, I encourage you to uh, look at Paul Clay's work to get some inspiration and uh, come up with your own piece of artwork that uh, you find inspiring and meaningful. Um, so anyway, the first thing that I'm gonna do is just get some acrylic colors laid down for my background and um, I'm gonna build up and go from there. I think uh, I'm going to um, maybe make a little, well, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna put down some colors. Just gonna play today. I've got this cerulean blue. Um, I'm trying to choose a green here. This is fern green, so I'll get these two colors down. Actually, I think just to get my base started, I'm just going to add some paint right to my canvas. I'll just start this way. This one is not open. If you are with me tonight, I know it's difficult to chat and paint, but feel free to say hello. This is just going to be kind of my base coat here, my first layer. I'm not too worried about the shapes. I'm just spreading this color around, trying to get rid of some of this white. Another really good medium for adding color to kind of an underlayer is watercolor. So I'm just kind of blending some of these colors around. I don't even need to clean up my brush. I'm just, just working freely here. Experimenting. That's one of the fun parts of doing the artist inspiration is that I don't know what I'm going to come up with. I'm just playing with my materials this evening.
I'm not too concerned with how this is going to turn out because it's just my bottom layer. And I know a lot of this is going to be covered. So I just chose three colors here that I knew would blend without making brown. And um, All right. So the next thing I'm going to do, um, I think is just, I'm going to choose two more colors to start making some shapes. Paul Clay used a lot of shapes. He experimented with um, some organic shapes, but he also liked to use, um, you know, very uh, clean shapes like circles and rectangles. Um, so I am going to pick a neutral color here. Which is, this is called buttermilk. I really love this color. Um, it's kind of a, a creamy neutral and then a scarlet red. And I'm just going to make some rectangles. I'm going to drop my paintbrushes. Um, just to really hit home with this, I hope, um, if you're painting along with me that you feel, um, that it's okay just to choose your own colors and, you know, if you're not feeling the direction I'm going, uh, that is absolutely okay. The idea here tonight is just to take inspiration from an artist and see what we come up with. There's no pressure to make anything specific. purposely uh, chose my colors this evening um, based on ones that I do not typically use. This is not a color palette that I like to play with. So, um, and a lot of his, in uh, Paul Clay's pieces, it seems like he uses um, primary colors and, and then add some neutral shades to kind of balance that. So um, I'm just playing here with some bright primaries and some neutrals and just kind of 
seeing where it takes me. I almost intentionally don't um, keep pieces right in front of me when I do these artist inspiration because I really do want to be inspired. Um, you know, there are times I'll give handouts or uh, printables uh, to make life a little easier on your end, but I try really hard to take inspiration and not copy. That's something. I am not always good at um, if I've got a piece right in front of me. So I like to kind of just take inspiration from memory. What kind of things um, stuck in my brain about a particular artist? You can hear that. That's my dog. He's upset about something. He doesn't like it when he can see people going to their mailboxes. So that's probably what it is. All right. The direction I'm going is kind of a cubist, somewhat abstract house scene of sorts. Um, I'm going to you know, play with some negative space by adding uh, some white around these shapes. And I'm going to thin down this white a little bit. You thin down paint so that it's somewhat transparent. That's called a wash. And the purpose is so that we can see um, what's underneath it without losing that texture. Blocking out some shapes. I'm going to try to um, turn, I guess turn this more into a little village. It's kind of what I um, envisioned after I made these rectangles. So some of this paint from the background is lifting, and that's okay. I'm just blending it in.
So again, sometimes uh, when we are working uh, in this cubist, surrealist, um, sort of uh, semi-abstract style, it's difficult um, not to make things realistic. Um, you know, when, I'm, when I think houses, I want to add, you know, all these little details. And um, that's really not what Paul Clay's work was about. So I'm going to add a few details, but I'm not, um, I'm not going to go crazy. I just want to give the, the idea, the impression of houses. Um, so um, I'm just thinking about what I might want to accentuate here. And what I can leave to the to the mind to the imagination Sometimes it's fun to do pieces from different artists just because um, we tend to think, oh, that's so easy uh, when we look at an abstract piece or, um, you know, a, a piece that appears like it's just houses or, you know, something cubist where it's just a lot of shapes. Um, but when you get in there and you try to play with it, it's uh, it's definitely different to um, look at it from uh, an outsider standpoint. Uh, balance your colors. Um, think about uh, making impressions and not just um, you know creating realistic pieces. Uh, finding balance, finding repetition. Um, choosing which parts to accentuate and which to leave out. Uh, there's lots of choices to be made and um, lots to play with. One of the nice things about uh, just playing like this is that I don't have to worry about, you know, is my finished product perfect? This is just an experiment in artist appreciation. No stress, no stress at all.
So as I'm deciding what marks to make here, I am playing with the idea of repetition. So making sure that I'm repeating similar shapes, similar marks. Remember there is no right or wrong here. Remember, I am just playing um, with whatever comes to my mind. So um, absolutely feel free to play and experiment and see where things lead you. You may be on a completely different path than me, and that is absolutely okay. I kind of went with um, kind of a cubist interpretation of his work. He definitely uh, has some more organic, uh, less Picasso-y type uh, work as well. And I'm just trying to think of uh, <clears throat> maybe some little details I could add in.
you join me um, for any of my previous artist inspirations. They have been very different from this. My my O'Keefe, we focused on um, creating large flowers and um, Van Gogh was definitely uh, focused on Starry Night and this is <clears throat> a big change from those. I have not worked with um, such an, uh, a, I don't know, it's the realist, cubist. I have not worked with such a different uh, aesthetic yet. So this is definitely new for me.
I think I'm finished with this. I've I've been looking at it for a minute, and I I think uh, I'm happy with where I landed. Um, certainly, this is not going to make me a million dollars, but. I am satisfied with some of the elements that I pulled out uh, as inspiration. Um, the the surrealist, um, not surrealist, cubist, kind of chunky, blocky style. Um, I experimented a little bit with negative painting and <clears throat> the color palette that I chose is not one that I would normally work with, but uh, tried to bring in some neutrals um, and some bright primary colors. Uh, I used um, black, but just sparingly to kind of accent some details or accentuate some details. Um, so I'm satisfied. This is definitely outside of my style, my normal style, um, outside my comfort zone, which is Kind of the idea um, when I do artist inspiration, I really like to just play and try something different that I wouldn't normally do. So um, that is how I ended up right here with my piece. And um, I appreciate you joining me this evening. And uh, if you created a piece of art uh, either with me live or uh, watching the replay, I would love to see it. Um, you can find me on Facebook at The Painted Cicada um, and share your work by tagging me. Or we do have a group where um, some of my Painted Cicada artists like to share their pieces, whether they make them with me or elsewhere. Um, I love to see what people create, uh, especially, I think, um, with an artist like this uh, who has a, an unusual style. I would love to see what you make. Um, so please share it with me. And uh, again, I would like to thank you for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed this evening uh, and would like to support my work, you can always visit me at uh, buymeacoffee.com slash painted cicada uh, and buy me a coffee. Uh, that helps support my artwork and my uh, free online lessons. And um, I like to do an artist inspiration lesson at least monthly. So uh, check out my website uh, and see what we've got coming up. Um, I know um, the next uh, artist inspiration that I have is uh, Vasquiat. And uh, he is definitely a nice, uh, fun, unique style. So keep an eye out for that. All my past artist inspirations are available on my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time. Have a good night.